Okay, let's. We're gonna try this once again. Um, I just tried to get on, and my uh, cell phone here said that I had a weak connection, and uh, don't know why. Because I pay a lot of money to the cable company to bring in business class uh, internet, so. Uh, should never say weak signal or you don't have a signal because I have business class which is about four times more and not that much maybe twice as much and eh, three times as much more expensive than having residential internet service so again uh, we're gonna try this again I want to talk about uh, marketplace ministry let's talk about it please go ahead and share this uh, a lot of people liked my uh, uh, Facebook live uh, video for last night. If you haven't seen that, you can go to my YouTube page, type in Apostle Robert Summers. We talked about uh, the curse of poverty and we had, you know, just a tremendous time doing that. Phone calls. So now I'm getting phone calls and I tried to disable my phone calls, um, but uh, my wife calls me. It never fails. Every time I'm doing a Facebook Live, my wife calls. But anyways, w before I get into it, hey, hey, my Cubs jersey out, my Cubs shirt and, uh, you know, really uh, excited about the Chicago Cubs. So if you're a Cubs fan, hey, thumbs up. All right, we're going to talk about marketplace ministry. And there's been a lot of people that have told me, you know, Apostle, I'm called to the marketplace. And when I talk to them about that, and I'm all for that, by the way, uh, I ask them, well, what are you doing? Okay, and they tell me, you know, they're, they're praying, they're fasting, uh, they're declaring and they're decreeing, and clearly there's nothing wrong with that. Every, every everybody should be doing that, quite frankly. But I ask them, well, what are you what are you doing to you know increase your stock? What are you doing to learn about the market that you're looking to go into? And I, I'm amazed that I find out they're really not doing anything. They're going to church. They're going to uh, good good afternoon, Brenda. They're going to prophetic gatherings. They're going to apostolic meetings. Uh, they're going to a lot of different conferences. They're going to see the latest and greatest. They're trying to have people lay hands on them, you know, and all this stuff. And they're having, and they, they're going up to these apostles and prophets, which, by the way, I'm an apostle. But they they think that somehow kingdom ministry is an impartation by someone who has no idea what kingdom ministry or marketplace ministry really is, let alone has any type of skill sets or knowledge in that arena. So marketplace ministry is not something that someone who doesn't understand the kingdom or understand what the marketplace is or how the marketplace operates can impart anything, okay? So what I want to talk, I do is, is try to help you guys out a little bit as it pertains to marketplace ministry. Again, there's a place for marketplace ministry, specifically those of you that are kingdom-minded people. Again, let's go ahead and share this video if you can, please, so we can get more people on and we can generate some, some real good discussion on this. When we talk about the marketplace, you may want to take some notes here. When we're talking about the marketplace, we need to understand, don't think in terms of the seven mountain teaching or the set, what's commonly referred to as the seven mountain mandate. Now, I have my personal view about that. Um, I think it's okay to a certain point. But again, it's really kind of taken it and drifted things a little bit to where I don't really agree with everything that's said on it, but we'll go with that for just a moment, okay? Marketplace is not the same as the workplace, okay? I'll say it again. The marketplace is not the same as the workplace. The marketplace is typically in any type of nation or any type of culture, any, any place that you go to. In order to have a functioning society, you have to have three components in place, okay? You with me? You need to have government. You need to have a form of government. We all need government, okay? Sometimes we think it's all wacky, which sometimes it is. We still need government. We need business or we need commerce, okay? And, of course, the third thing we need is education. So the marketplace, in and of itself, is speaking about those three sectors of society. Again, government, business, and then, of course, education. Now, in the Seven Mountain movement, they, they throw in family, and they throw in religion, they throw in arts and entertainment, and then media. 
But we're not talking about family because family is not the marketplace. Family is family and it has its place. It's a very critical and important part. Same thing with religion. Religion is not marketplace because religion is actually, watch this, embedded in the sectors of government. It's embedded in the sector of business because a, a, a church or an organization, a denomination, is a business. And then, of course, it even puts its hand into education because whether they're, what they're teaching is right or not, the fact is they are educating, okay? You got that? So we can't say religion is one of the mountains, okay? It's embedded in these things. The other thing is then arts and entertainment. Arts and entertainment, as much as we want to say, let's go take it, that's true. But the way you take it is through the business sector. Arts and entertainment, the reason people do arts and entertainment, typically, although there's some cultural relevance to it, I understand that, but they want to make money, which again becomes commerce. It becomes part of the business marketplace. Okay, And then, of course, media, which is very important. Media, of course, today people say that media is what? The fourth branch of government because it's so influential to what we do. We have to be very careful. Christians, I'm very concerned about Christians today because they're being hoodwinked by the media into believing what they're seeing on especially uh, mainstream medias. Okay. Uh, but that is a business. The people that run media are in it for the money. They're not in it just to give you information. Now, there may be some social media type people, independents, what have you, that go out and do some research, and they do that for that purpose. But at the end of the day, it's about money. Same thing with healthcare. Healthcare is about money, okay? Healthcare is not something that, you know, you say, oh, I'm, I'm called to the healthcare marketplace. No, you may be called to the business marketplace or the educational or in the case of government. Okay, you with me? So hopefully you you understand that. Okay. One of the things that I find out is people that say I'm in the market uh, I'm in the marketplace ministry or have a marketplace ministry. They have a job. You're not in the marketplace ministry if you go to a job. Let's say you work at and I'll just use a, a, a fast food chain, Wendy's. If you work at Wendy's and nothing wrong with working at Wendy's, but if you work at Wendy's you are not in the marketplace ministry. You're not. You're not. You, it doesn't matter how much you evangelize to your coworkers. You may be flipping a burger and talking about Jesus. That's not marketplace ministry. What that is is that's called the workplace, and there's a place for that. The thing about, and that's a job. When you have a job only, you are in the workplace, or sometimes the world calls it the workforce. Are you with me? Okay. Share this video so we get more people involved. Okay, and you have a level of influence. But your influence is going to be very, very small. It's not going to be very large. You're not going to have a broad base. Because if you're, again, flipping a burger at Wendy's, you may talk to a few people about the Lord, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But again, you don't have a huge sphere of influence. Marketplace ministry is for all of you that want more. It's for people that it's not just about making money. You're going to make money. I mean, that's what you're doing. But it's about, again, in the educational arena, it's about educating people. It's about, and if it's about government, it's about governing people, specifically in this country. And then, of course, business is about, you know, profits. Uh, not not profits that prophesy, but P-R-O-F-I-T, profit, okay? Um, and you have to think along those lines, okay? Think along, I like that. Whatever somebody did, those little hearts just kind of blew up. That was really funny. Um so what you need to do is you need to understand how these how these things work. And you want to, if you're a marketplace ministry, you want to own a business, okay? Marketplace ministry is about business ownership or it's about si system ownership. In other words, if you think of, think of Bill Gates, okay, the wealthiest man in this country, I don't, I, maybe in, in the world, I don't know, but I know in this country, he's the most wealthy. I think he's got like 78, 80 billion dollars. Okay. I hope I'm right on that number. That's a lot of money. Okay. That's more money than we can really comprehend. Okay. But his wealth is tied to a system he created. He created what? Microsoft. He created a operating system for Windows and a bunch of other things. You know, uh, the platforms that we, most of us use. That's a system and people buy into that system. It's not just one product, it's a system. So if you're in the marketplace, one of the things that I wanna share with you is that you want to begin to develop some type of system that 
begins to influence society. I guarantee you, Bill Gates has influenced society, okay? Steve Jobs, before he died, influenced society. He was an innovator. These are innovators. And if you're called to marketplace ministry, you are an innovator. It may You may have innovation maybe on not as big as a level as Bill Gates, but you have to begin to think in terms of system. What type of system can I put in place? All these millennials, all these young people that are getting online and taking their computers here and they're, they're doing things and they're setting up things on the webs and, and all this other stuff. People that come up, you know, uh, Facebook. I mean, this guy's in the, what does he got? I think I looked the other day, he's got like 30 some billion dollars or maybe a little bit less, a little bit more. But I mean, come on, this guy's like, what, th not even 30? Okay, he started this years ago. That's innovation. He got into business. He's in marketplace. The problem is Christians were not doing it. Okay, and we're going to talk about that today. Are you with me? We got eye to eye on this? Okay, you with me? You have to develop a system because systems influence society. Or you have to get in some type of position. In other words, if you're in the workforce and you're flipping a hamburger, nothing wrong with that, but you want to work your way and get into a position where you own a chain of Wendy's and then ultimately get into the boardroom where you are affecting the masses all over the world, that where your decisions begin to bring revolutionary change across the world and the cultures of this world. That's called marketplace. You can do it, but you have to change the way that you think and begin to think in terms of that. Now, we see this all in the Word of God. Let's not say, let's not be, you know, be, because so spiritual, they're like, oh, well, I just want to pray and prophesy and, 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 and fast and all this other stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. We should be doing that. That's elementary, okay? But here's the thing. When you look in the Word of God, you will find out that Jesus was not in a religious environment, okay? If you're in the marketplace ministry, you're not going to be found in a religious environment. That's going to bind you. It's not going to have you released into your sphere of influence or into that area that you need to be fed in order to bring influence into one of the three sectors of the marketplace, business, government, or education. Are you with me? In the Bible, you find out that Jesus, even his miracles, you know, you find very few miracles performed in the temple. You find one at the temple gate. You see in the synagogues, in a religious setting, you see some demons being cast out. But by and large, ministry is most effective when it's on the street. Ministry is not very effective in religious type institution gatherings, our conferences that we have. And, we, you know, we, we have the bands and we have all that stuff. Nothing wrong with that. There's a place for that. But we've made that the focus, and we then say we need to gather there, and then we call it things like, oh, this is the Marketplace Ministry Conference, and nobody talks about the kingdom, nobody talks about marketplace, nobody talks about business, nobody talks about government, nobody talks about education, nobody talks about releasing. We talk about religious things. We begin to talk about how we need more apostles, more prophets, more evangelists. We need more prayer. We need more pray fasting. We need more declarations and decrees. We need more watchers on the wall. We need other stuff. Listen, if you're in the marketplace ministry, that that is elementary to you. You need to have that under your belt. The problem is, is that's not going to sustain you in order to do what you need to do. You need to be like, see, Priscilla and Aquila, if you look at, if you, you can look at Acts 18, see, these people went into a demonic stronghold. Watch this now. This is good. This is good stuff, okay? They went into a demonic stronghold, all right? And in that area, they brought some severe change. They were connected to Paul why? Initially, they were connected to Paul because they were in the same business. They were both of the same trade. See, Paul was a tradesman. Now, watch this. This is going to get good. You may want to just share this about 100 people right now because what I'm going to say is going to rock your world. It's going to blow your mind, and it's really going to irritate a lot of preachers, okay? So just, just share. Just share like crazy. Just go ahead and share it. They can watch it later on. That's fine. Here's the thing. A apostle like Paul was a businessman that became an apostle, but yet still continued in his business. Why? Because he didn't need to milk and hoodwink the people to fund his ministry. He was self-funding. Self-funding. See, this is how I do ministry. It's self-funding. I have ways of, 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 of revenue streams and so on 
to fund ministry. Now, this does not say that tithes and offerings and gifts of love that you, you wonderful people, send in are not used for kingdom work. They are. But what it does is we don't have to put, we don't have to manipulate, we don't have to merchandise, we don't have to to begin to uh, uh, hoodwink you by feeding you a bunch of lies to have money come in to, to, to support me. Ministry does not support me. I support ministry. Okay, you want to be serious about marketplace ministry, you're going to find out that you're going to invest more than you initially reap. Okay, and you're going to invest in treasures laid up in heaven. Okay, and you're going to receive a great reward. However, you will in this life also, because you deny self, you will reap in this world many times over and over again. I'm a testimony to that. So we need to have marketplace ministers, John and Paul. I mean, John and Peter, Marketplace Ministers. And I'll talk about that on a different uh, Facebook Live video that I do. We'll go deep into their lives, okay? But here's the thing. Most of you know this, and you can tell your friends this. On Sunday, 99%, you know, you're going to worship, you're going to praise, you're going to prophesy, you're going to have a wonderful time, you're going to hear the Word of God. But 99% of the people that are in that congregation on Sunday... 99% on Monday will not return to the local church. They go into the various sectors of society. Again, business, government, education, or the workplace. So they're either in the marketplace or workplace. They're not, they're not, in, they're not employed by the church. You know, maybe you have a church administrator, maybe a secretary, maybe you have, you know, the pastor, somebody, whatever, but in some teachers. But at the end of the day, you're not, that's not where you're at. So here's the question. Why is the church trying to raise you up and spend so much time with you doing things that are done on Sunday only, but yet on Monday through Friday, you're not building any marketplace ministry. You see, marketplace ministry is not, a, you don't go to the marketplace and begin to prophesy. That's not what, my, you know, I think people think that marketplace ministry is why well, I'm a prophet. I'm going to go there and I'm going to go to business leaders and I'm going to begin to prophesy to boardrooms. That's not what marketplace ministry is. This is, we're in the kingdom, okay? The kingdom's everywhere, okay? We don't need that anymore. What we need is we need believers being equipped, watch my words, being equipped in marketplace things. So you're going to have to get educated, okay? The church is notorious for continuing and, con and to try to equip marketplace ministers in churchy things. You hear me? The church is trying to equip marketplace ministers in, you know, listen, you're, if you're a marketplace ministry, minister, you're not going to spend a lot of time trying to learn what colors, what the prophetic colors represent, okay? But yet we spend an enormous amount of time talking about uh, blue is this, blue is the rivers of God, red is the blood of Jesus, green represents healing, and all this other stuff. And, and those are good things to know, but if you're in the marketplace, Listen, you can you can have a class in that. You can hear a teaching on that. You can read a book on it. But you need to spend your time doing other things that equip you for the marketplace. And the church is notorious for giving you a bunch of things that they think you should know. But indeed, as it pertains to the marketplace, you don't need to know. For example, what you need to do before you go into the marketplace is you need to understand the kingdom of God. You don't need to know religious protocol. You, need, you don't need to know uh, uh, all, all of the terms. You don't need to know all the names of demons and all this other stuff. You need to understand about the kingdom of God and the principles of the kingdom. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, here's another dangerous thing. A lot of people in churches today, a lot of religious personnel, a lot of religious leaders, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, bishops, whatever... A lot of them look at marketplace ministers, unfortunately, as second-class citizens, that less than. Well, yeah, we're not going to spend time on that. We just need to sing the songs of the Lord. No, give me some equipping in business. Give me some equipping in government. Give me some equipping in education. How do I do this? Somebody help me. Somebody tell me the church is not doing it. So now they look at marketplace ministers, well, you're not spiritual, you're less anointed, you're not as holy, you know, whatever. Listen, let's just be honest with you as I bring some closure to this thing. If you're a marketplace minister, you're not going to be found sitting in some type of gathering, okay, learning how to, like I said, interpret the colors. You're not going to be concerned about what, what flags represent or what the garments represent or what the shafar represent. This is not, it's, it's good stuff to know. 
but it's not critical to, it's certainly not critical to understanding the kingdom. And it's not very important, if at all, pertaining to what you're supposed to be doing, okay? Rather than being in a gathering, and again, I want to be real clear, there's nothing wrong with gatherings. I go to gatherings, I conduct gatherings. But I'm talking about workshops, I'm talking about training, I'm talking about equipping, which is what we should be doing, okay? You would rather be found in some type of network event, maybe some training sessions, maybe a brainstorming session, maybe a mastermind session, something where you can get together with people of like mind and begin to talk about business, begin to talk about government, begin to talk about education, how you can bring reformation. See, you're a reformer. You need to understand that you're a reformer. I'm a reformer. I'm a societal reformer. I'm looking to change and it, I'm looking to influence, I shouldn't say change, but to influence society in everything that I have my hands in, whether it be the local church or whether it be a business or whether it be a network or whether it be something like that. And we need to spend more time getting people trained, okay? See, you're not going to waste your money going to a, 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 a conference uh, that, 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 that equips you, like I said, in, 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 in arts uh, prophetic arts, and there's nothing wrong with prophetic arts. I love prophetic arts, but you're not going to do that if you're in the marketplace. That's not you're not going to be found there. You're not going to be found going to seminary. You're not going to be found going to Bible college. What would you do at a Bible college? They don't teach anything about marketplace ministry. But you, wh but people are spending money going to these Bible colleges because they have some name, you know, some famous name. As we, I don't know what famous is, but some name of somebody say, oh, that's their Bible school or or, or whatever. No, we're not, you don't, you would be, you would go bonkers there. Rather, you need to connect with kingdom minded people that understand marketplace ministry. Okay. So let's, let's, let's just, let's just get this clear. In the marketplace, which many of you are probably called to, since you're watching this, maybe you're sharing it, maybe it's just good information for it, for you. Begin, don't let anybody, specifically religious people, Stop allowing them to treat you like you are the laity. That's right. You are not the laity. In the kingdom of God, there is no clergy and laity. There's no pulpit and pew. There's no, I'm the apostle and you're just a, you're just a believer. You're just a follower. No. In the kingdom... Everything is horizontal. There's no hierarchy. Don't believe these apostles that say they are the master apostle. Don't believe these prophets that say they're the master prophet. Don't believe these people that say they're over regions. They're the apostle over the region. And the apostle has the metron over that region. Yeah, right. Okay, that's called control, witchcraft, manipulation. They need to sit down, shut up. Okay, we don't have time for these people. Okay. Real apostles will be found serving people. Real apostles will be found raising up sons and daughters that they serve. Real apostles will work together with other apostles and they will talk about the kingdom. They won't talk about their particular network. They won't talk about their church or their sphere. They're going to talk about the kingdom. And when you talk about the kingdom, you have to talk about the marketplace because that's where 99 if not more, maybe 99.9% .9 of believers spend their time. That's where they spend their time. So we need to be teaching more about how to live where we spend our time. Oh my good, that's good. I'm going to write that down. We need to learn how to, how to live in areas we spend our time. And if you only spend two hours in a local church, why are you spending so much time learning how to fit in the church? You don't need to fit in. You don't need, I'll say it again, you don't need to fit in. Be not conformed to this world. Religion is of the world. It's not of the kingdom. Okay? Write that down. Religion is not the kingdom and kingdom is not religion. Okay? Stop spending so much time and energy. Get equipped in things. I, I am going to equip you. If nobody else is going to do it, I'll equip you. Now there's other people doing it. There's tons of people doing it. But I'm going to do it for the people that connect to me. Let's get you equipped and let's get you understanding business acumen. Let's get you to understand government, what government is, education, society, systems, how to network, how to move, how to talk, how to do these things. Because you, got, you can't go in the marketplace without being equipped to do it. Isn't it amazing? We don't send, we don't send military people. We don't send, my son was a Marine. We don't send, we don't send our troops into harm's way without equipping him first. 
We put them through basic training. We equip them. We show them how to use weapons and all this other stuff, tactics and strategies. No, we're just we're just releasing people. Oh, they'll say the Lord, you're called to marketplace ministry. I release you into marketplace. And then they're kind of like, they're stuck. They don't know what to do. Okay, so you had the greatest and latest apostles say, I declare and decree and prophesy to you that the Lord has raised you up into marketplace ministry. I release you into marketplace. And then they go out there like, what do I do? Okay, the, 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 yes, you, are, you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things, but you also have to apply yourself. Okay, there's nothing wrong. If you see back here, I have numerous books on business, cultural uh, things, uh, uh, society, uh, 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 education. I have books on uh, government, history books. You have to get equipped. Do you understand me? I believe that it's time for that, it, that we start raising up some marketplace ministers. Okay? I believe that. And if you're a marketplace minister, then listen, connect to me, follow me on Facebook, go to my YouTube page, uh, uh, subscribe to that. I'm going to begin to get some more videos out there. I'm going to do some professional training. I'm putting it together now. You can't see it in the in this way. I have a huge, I'm in my, I have this big studio here. Uh, I, I'm putting together some curriculum and all that stuff. We're going to get you equipped. Okay? We're going to get you equipped, but we're going to do it from, not from an evangelical perspective. We're going to do it from a kingdom perspective. So it's time, people of God, it is time. It's time for you to not just, and, and by the way, if you're in the marketplace, you're going to have money, okay? When you go in the marketplace, now you don't go into the marketplace for the purpose of having money and wealth consumed upon yourself, but that is a fruit. Your labor of love in the marketplace is about going in there and and, and watch this. I'll, I'll close with this. The Bible says that the kingdom is like yeast, like yeast, that okay, like leaven. And when you take leaven, some of you that know how to cook, when you take leaven, you have a little bit of leaven, and you can just take a pinch and put it in the dough, what the happens to that dough? It begins to rise. It begins to expand. But notice this. A little bit, just a little bit of leaven influences a big barrel of dough. It doesn't take a lot. All it takes is you to get equipped and to, to be fearless and to be resolved and to begin to go out into the business arena, to go out into government and go on education. Listen, we need to start raising up some people to go. We need to raise up lawyers. We need to raise up teachers. We need to raise up doctors. We need to raise up surgeons. We need to raise up some, some business leaders. We need to raise up some entrepreneurs. But we need to have the tools available to you guys in order to do that. It's not going to happen through a declaration and decree. And again, I believe in confessing. I believe in declaring and decreeing. I do that. But all that does is break a barrier. You now have to take it and run with it. The kingdom is like a man that put his hand to the plow and he didn't look back. He goes forward and he keeps advancing. We need to take the kingdom of God that's like yeast and get into these sectors of society and bring influence to them. This is what the homosexual community did. They took different sectors, they embedded themselves in there, now they're running things. Same with government. I could talk about government all day. Our government is being ran by people that are, 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 are demonic, perverted, they're in, they're in bed with the media, they're using the media to hoodwink you, to hoodwink me and others to try to get us to vote and make decisions based on what they want. No. Be led by the Spirit of God, people. But when you're in the marketplace, see, you'll see all this stuff. I was in the marketplace. I know. I, I saw this stuff. I saw when you were in the marketplace, you'll see racism. You'll see division. You'll see the occult. You'll see witchcraft. You'll see the Illuminati. You'll see Freemasonry. You'll see all this stuff. But you have, you, you, you're not going to see it in the church. You're just going to say, you, oh, it exists. No, I'm talking about seeing it. So when you see it, you can deal with it. You can't deal with these spirits sitting in a church. You have to get into the marketplace. Listen, I say this. Let's go where the devils are. Let's go where the demons are. Let's go where we need to go to get the people free. See, when you're in the marketplace, you can actually go in and operate a business that may be created uh, uh, cups, okay? Like these little cups like this. You create a cup, and then somebody that owns a bar or some other type of establishment calls you to get a cup. Wonderful. And you're going to go there and you're going to talk about your cups because that's what you're in business to do. But because you're in the area of affluence, because you own the cup company, you're going to talk to them about the Lord. You're going to talk to them about the kingdom. And now you're in a position of 
influence because you own a system, you own a business. You can't go in there saying, standing outside, thus saith the Lord, I declare and decree that this business shuts down. No. You have to go and you have to connect with people. You want demons out of regions? You want demons out of government? You want demons out of business? You want demons out of education? We all know all, the, all those three are screwed up. You want it out of the arts and entertainment? Go into that group. Oh my God, did he really, did Apostle Summer say that? Yes, it's time, people. It's time. Amen. Hey, wow. Well, I see. Yeah, Mike, I know. I know I'm talking your language. I know we, we think we think eye to eye on that, don't we? Uh, listen, I love you guys. I appreciate you all. Uh, stay tuned. We're coming out with a lot of different things, okay? Check out my website, Summers Ministries. You know, join my newsletter. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask you for anything. You want to give the ministry? Give. You, it'll tell you all about how to do it. Please do it. We're just gonna, we're gonna use the money. I'm not gonna take the money. I'm gonna use the money and go preach the gospel. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go somewhere and preach and teach. I'm gonna buy more equipment. I'm gonna do whatever I have to do. That's what it's about. I'm self-funded. I'm good. God takes care of me. Okay. I'm a sower. I'm reaping now. Amen. I love you guys. I look forward to. Hey, listen. If you're in Kansas City this weekend, come out. Deliver America. I'll be there. Okay, this Friday, Saturday, Kansas City, Missouri. Then in two weeks, I believe, on October 27th, 28th, I'll be in Detroit. That's right. Motown. All right, I love Motown. Uh, I'll be in Detroit, and we're going to be teaching deliverance ministry, equipping people in deliverance ministry, bringing people, uh, getting people set free. Uh, Deliver America is different than just going to a gathering. It's not just about preaching and casting out demons. It's about actually uh, answering your question, talking through things, uh, getting people to understand true, balanced spiritual warfare. Uh, from there, we'll be then in Chicago, Illinois, on the south side, uh, I believe in South Holland, in uh, the third week of November, second week of November, and then the third week of November, we'll be in Waukegan, Illinois. Uh, and I believe that closes out the year, and then we are now taking bookings for next year. So if you want us to come to your region, hey, hit me up. Uh, we'll work something out. Again, I don't charge to minister. How do you charge to preach the gospel? It's not your word you're preaching, so you can't charge for it. I only charge for my collateral material, my books and stuff that I put together, because, hey, that's called business. That's called intellectual property. Amen. Love you guys. Love you guys. That's right, Jeanette. Coming to coming to Waukegan. Coming to Waukegan. Glory to God. Coming to Detroit. Yes. God bless you. Love you guys. Hey, be good. Remember, Apostle Summer's here. And as always, walk in your dominion, walk in authority. It's all about the kingdom. God bless. Love you guys. <laughs> I wish I could hit a little button back to you saying love, 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 love. <laughs> all right. God bless you.